we have different sufferings also like we have adhyatmic kalesha we have adi daivik kalesha and we have adi bhautik kalesha and that we know that you know these are the miseries which are caused by calamities like earthquakes and like tsunamis like hurricanes and then uh, there may be a different uh, sufferings that may caused by different living entities and that may include uh, the virus situation that we are going on, the COVID-19, it's a problem, it's a suffering. And there could be a suffering from our other family members. There could be a problem because of our colleagues. There could be a problem from our boss. There could be a problem from our classmates, schoolmates, our friends, relatives. You can name it, right? From other living entities also, we can have a lot of problems. Now, the third is Adhyatmic, okay, fine. If you are not worried about the calamities, okay, if I'm peaceful at my home, I'm peaceful in my office environment, then there are problems which is caused by our own self, by our own mind and body. Even our mind brings up a lot of problem. If we just undergo any scenario, we have two situations, either to accept or to reject. And at that time also, our thoughts, they keep on boggling like a pendulum whether we should accept, whether we should reject, whether we should do this or whether we should do this. So these are also kind of a suffering, you know, that we go through. So if we are least bothered about other living entities, our friends, relatives, boss, employer, employee, then also within our own selves also, we are fighting every day, rather every moment. We have to come on to some confusion whether I should accept this or that. So that itself is a, such a problem. So we have gone through that, you know, how there are a lot of miseries that can be caused by all these factors. Then the question comes that, what is the solution to all these problems of life? You know, is there any solution or we just keep on uh, hanging around that, yes, there is a problem, there is a problem, then they'll do nothing about it. Yes, there is a solution. And what's the solution? That we'll go now. So I hope you are able to see my screen and uh, we'll see what next we can, just one minute. Let's do this. Okay, so now another question can be asked that how the scientific advancement put a full stop to all suffering? Because now someone may say that yes, we do have sufferings, but we, have, we do have scientific advancement. There are some diseases, but remedies are also coming up. So doesn't science uh, provide all the solution to all the problems of life? So that we have to answer. That all the advancements in science or technology are made to make our lives easier. Okay, they don't help us to eradicate the problem from its root cause, but it helps in the technology or the science, it helps to make our life easier. For example, now this Zoom call, it's a technology, it's an advancement, it's a science that now we can see each other, we can talk each other, you guys can see me, I can see you, provided if you turn on your video, <laughs> that's a separate issue. But yes, this is an advancement, very true. But we have to find a solution to the real problems of life. These problems are also temporary and science is providing all those uh, remedy factors for these short-term uh, problems. But we are talking about those problems which are the real life problems and that science is, whether science is able to provide or not. So science advancement means newer and newer ingenious ways of covering up the reality. So science basically covers up the reality. Like for example, old age, people get old, but science provide, technology provides various cosmetics through which we can remove our wrinkles, we can color our hair, we can have a different set of teeth, you know, all these things are there. These are all cosmetic products. So yes, science is providing, but all this is to make our life easier. Man is also trying to make heaven on hell you know, also known as what is scientific advancement. So basically, science has hardly begun to address the real life problems of our life. But science gives up only a patch up solution to cover up problems, but it doesn't help in solving our problems. So that, you know, we have to understand. So uh, let's move on and see. 
So the solution today might lead to the problems later. Like for example, the cars. Cars were a solution, very true, to travel a long distance faster and safer. But today, because of this different cars, problem today is that it leads to pollution. It leads to carbon dioxide emission, which creates a lot of pollution, right? Which is not good for health. So what solution that science is providing? It is, yes, it is providing a temporary solution. I'm not denying to it. And neither we are against those science, those scientific advancement. No, we are not. But we have to understand that when there is a scientific advancement, it does provide a solution, but it also gives up another problem, okay? So therefore, science cannot be regarded as the solution to a real life problem. Man has not become happy because the problems created by technology keep tormenting him. So Srila Prabhupada, you know, he used to say, that give God the Nobel Prize because God has created all the principal laws of electricity and other materialist materials for scientific advancement. So just like there is a big brain behind everything, like if we say that there is a machine, so the machine doesn't work on its own. It needs an operator, right? Similarly, yes, the scientific advancement do provide some temporary help, but Behind that scientific advancement is the big brain of God. So that we have to understand. But unfortunately, the modern educated man is purchasing the attractive comforts of this materialistic civilization at the expense of ignoring knowledge of the soul and the God. And such a life will make one more miserable. How it is? Let's see. So the solution is Krishna consciousness. That's the only solution through which we can be able to get rid of our real life problems. Even the problem of birth, even the problem of death, even the problem of old age and all the diseases. And even the problem of the sufferings that has been caused by other living entities, by our own mind and body and soul and by the natural calamities. So Krishna consciousness is the solution. How? Let's see and see to it. So first of all, we have to see what is perceiving the master of the universal government. So let's first understand this, that how Krishna consciousness can be the solution. Now somebody can say that everything, because the scientists, they have this philosophy, especially the Darwin theory. It says that everything starts from a big bang, big bang theory. No, it's not. How? People simply believe that the universe began with a big bang. But usually what the big bang is, it's a use of a bomb. People, due to a bomb, you know, there's a big bang. That's what they say. And then everything comes out by chance. That's their theory. And unfortunately today, our teenagers, people like you, students, they are being trained up into such kind of philosophy because you are forced to learn this theory that everything comes from big bang. But now somebody can ask that when there is a big bang because of a bomb, even if you uh, uh, at your house or maybe outside your house, if you hear some kind of some noise, then you are curious to know like who did it, who created this explosion, whether it was terrorist, some soldiers. So explosion may cause some damage. It cannot bring something good out of it. Okay. But Still, you know, the science doesn't believe. The science says everything comes from a big bang. So the universe we see is a perfect residence to live in for all living entities, just like a five-star hotel. So where the we are living is just a kind of a five-star hotel. So possible to believe that a five-star hotel must come from a big bang? Can we just believe that this whole universe is coming out of a big bang where everything, everything is so perfectly situated. The sun rises at its time, the sun sets at its time, then the moon rises, then the moon sets, all the planetary objects, everything is working in a perfect situation. The earth is revolving and rotating at a particular speed. The moon is taking its own um, circles properly. And then there is a in air, there is a wind, there is a water, everything is provided so nicely. So can we just think, you know, that this all is coming from a big bang? Then Prabhupada says that if yes, 
then start your own big bank construction company. At least you will be building up some apartments. But can we do it? No. Through big bank, it's only destruction. But what we see in universe is something that is a facility that has been given from a five-star hotel. Like the facility of a five-star hotel is there. Similarly, all the different kinds of much better those facilities are being provided by the Supreme Lord, who is a big brain behind that big bang, the so-called big bang. So there is no as such a big bang philosophy, but we call it as BB philosophy. That is a big brain philosophy. And that is from our Supreme Lord, who is the cause of all causes, who is working behind to provide us everything so that we can be happy. You know? So now we see that how the two different laws work. So we know the laws of a country, the laws of a universe. So if we see that I have just mentioned, maybe you can skip this slide, it's not that important, but what I want to say that if we follow the laws of a government, then we are at peace, right? And we are not afraid of cops. So if we follow all the policies, all the rules and regulations, which is laid down by the country, then we are a good citizen. We are categorized as a good citizen. Similarly, we have some universal laws. So if we follow those universal laws, then also we are a good human being. So we have to come onto the platform of a perfect human being, a humanitarian platform. But we are not right now on that. Till the time we are not on the human platform, we cannot avoid problems in our life. So this is how it works, you know. So if we follow the rules of the government, we are not afraid of any policies of the government. We just follow it properly. And then, you know, we are good citizens. Similarly, if we follow all the universal laws, then we are good devotee. Now, the question comes is that how do we learn what is it is? So what we have to see is that the universe we are living is owned and controlled by the Supreme Lord. So that thing we have to understand that the universe which we are living in is owned and controlled by the Supreme Lord. So just as the prime minister for any government, you know, there is a prime minister. Similarly, there is a Supreme Lord who is the presiding authority of the whole universe. So that we have to understand. Next is, when we ignore the laws of the government, that is the normal government of our country, or we ignore the laws which has been laid down by the prime minister, then we invite punishment. Similarly, if we ignore the laws of the Supreme Lord, then we will have also the punishment which will come in the form of various kinds of sufferings, okay? So the agency of uh, Krishna through Maya Devi, the agents of Maya, they work and we are, unto, we are under the cause of those sufferings, okay? Now the sufferings we undergo, whatever sufferings we undergo is the proof that we are going against the will of the Supreme Lord and therefore, we should take some steps forward so that we can avoid those sufferings. And to that, we have to become, adopt some virtues in our life, to be selfless, to extend our serving attitude and to serve to uh, attitude of giving somebody, you know, something. Then what else we have to do is that we should learn from the manual of God. Just like all the uh, apps you know, this appliances, anything if you work, take, or any technology if you see, everything comes with a manual, like this phone, you know, iPhone, it comes with a manual. We see some washing machine, it comes with a manual. If a dishwasher, it comes with a manual. Any chopper or any, any appliances if we see, everything comes with a manual so that we have the right thing where we can understand how it gets operated, how it can be you know, properly worked on. Similarly, our life, which is such a wonderful machine, how it can come without a manual? It cannot, and it also has a manual. And what's the manual of our life is? 
Bhagavad Gita. So the solution what I was talking about is Krishna consciousness means to study Bhagavad Gita. So here I'm bringing up the topic of Bhagavad Gita in the life that how Bhagavad Gita is very, very important in our life. Bhagavad Gita is the only book that is referred to as the manual of our human life. It has solved the problems for ages for many, many people and it will solve the problem for many years to come. So that, you know, we have to understand. Now, one may say, one may ask that what is the cause of our suffering? So that answer is also given by Bhagavad Gita. Why should God, God give us suffering if he is an all loving father? The question may be asked. Okay, fine. We accept that Krishna consciousness is the solution of all the problems. Then the question may be asked, then why God is giving us all those problems? Why God is giving us all those sufferings? If he is our loving eternal father, why a father will torment his son? You know, that question may be asked. So suffering is not caused by God, it is caused by ourselves. And even this understanding can be brought up only when we study Bhagavad Gita, that suffering is not caused by God. Though God is the cause of all causes, but he is not the cause of our suffering. It is by our own selves, by our own desire that we are suffering. And there the role of karma comes in. A child who wants to leave the safety of his parents hand and cross the busy road alone will undoubtedly feel frightened by the huge cars as they go by. So here the example of a child is given. Now the parent is there to hold the hand of a child to make to help the child to cross the road. Now if the child decides that I want to leave the hands of my parents and I'll do it on my own, definitely he'll bear the consequences of the huge cars that go by. Either he'll be able to cross the road or he'll get feared, you know, frightened by the huge cars or he'll meet with an accident. Now the result can be anything. But the point what here we want to bring up is just like we are those, uh, you know, what do you say? We are those kind of child, you know, those uh, who do not want to listen to the parents. And we want to cross the road on our own selves. So we are those adamant children where we want to do, we want to be independent of everything. We don't want to show any kind of dependency on our parents. So this is the philosophy which is not correct. The right philosophy, the independence, the so-called independence is when we are 100% dependence on our seniors, on Krishna. That is what is the real independence is. Real independence is not that I'll work on my own and I am the doer and I'll do it on my own. I don't want anyone. I don't want my friends. I don't want my parents. I don't want Krishna. That's not the real independence. The real independence is when we are totally dependent on our parents and we are totally dependent on our Supreme Lord, who is our well-wisher, who is our eternal friend, who is our ever-loving father. No, we have to depend on him. Then, if we live our life in harmony with God, then we can certainly achieve happiness. So how we can do that? by understanding that we are eternally the servants of the Supreme Lord and we should love and we should serve him. But because we want to enjoy separately, we experience suffering by coming into this material hellish world. So this is basically the cause of our suffering. What is the cause? That we want to enjoy separately. So we experience suffering from the Supreme Lord. We want to enjoy separately from the Supreme Lord. We don't want Krishna to intervene in our life. And just like uh, in the, especially, you know, we see in this teenage, like you all are, I'm sorry to say, but some teenagers, you know, they don't want the interference of their parents in their life. And they want to take all their decisions on themselves. Now, since they are in that teenage age, you know, there might be some times that their decisions may not be appropriate. So there is no harm 
to take guidance from your parents, from your elders, from your mentors, because they have seen, they have seen everything, they have gone through, they have experienced. So they can guide you with their, with their experience so that you can improve in your life. So that experience is very important. It's a common saying also that you will not have enough time to commit all your mistakes, right? So you don't, you don't get a chance to commit all that mistakes. But still, the thing is that you can learn from the mistakes of others. The problem that our elders have gone through or our seniors have gone through, we can learn from them and we can rectify so that we don't go into that problem and we can rectify at a root cause only. And that's why I'm saying how important it is that we have to understand that why I'm suffering. So whenever we have also any problem in our life, especially in the teenager or in any age rather, I must say, that whenever we have a suffering, whenever we have a problem, please sit back, introspect, introspect that what is the cause of it. And if you are not able to jump on to any conclusion, there is no harm. It's not an uh, ego issue. It's not an issue of your dignity, you know, if you go to your seniors. Rather, it, it will be very, very helpful. Just go to your parents, reach out to them. They are your loving parents. You know, they need you. You need them. Try to build a harmony with them. Discuss with them. Even if you have done something wrong, there is no harm in discussing with them. Like if, if a sinful person has something, you know, he has done some sinful activities, you know, there is no harm in going to Krishna and saying and confessing that, oh, I did this, you know, I, I tell lie and, you know, I steal or, or whatever, whatever any activity one person does. There is no harm in confessing. Similarly, if we have done something, as, as I'm talking about you all, you are in such a crucial age. This teenage is such an age where, you know, you want to be independent, but at the same time, you know, you, sh you don't want to commit those mistakes because if you commit some mistake, you know, and if you are not able to rectify it, then it could be a long lasting one. So you don't want that, you know. So there is no harm in reaching out to your parents, in reaching out to your elders, that, you know, you can take guidance from them. You can get their experience so that you don't commit those mistakes. And even if you have committed any mistake, then how to rectify it, you can always go towards them. So this is what I want to really stress on it, that, you know, these teenagers these days, especially because of the influence of, you know, this high Kali Yuga and the influence of this, this uh, scientific advancement, this influence of this technologies, you know, they think that, you know, they want to be independent. But as I told you, the real independence is when you are dependent on your seniors, when you are dependent on your parents, when you are dependent on Krishna. Okay. So that's the point I really want to stress on. And that's why I mentioned. Now, if we decided to turn back to Krishna, then suffering is gone and we achieve everlasting happiness. So if we decide that now, yes, oh Krishna, I do remember you and I think I know that you are the cause of all causes and I surrender unto you, then yes, all our suffering has gone because now we understand that whatever we are suffering is just temporary. We have our eternal relationship with the Supreme Lord. So that is what is known as returning to harmony. The symptoms of suffering is good. Sometimes, you know, we say that why I'm suffering. Suffering, the symptoms of suffering is good because it gives us an opportunity to look for the cause. Similarly, uh, if, we, if you see that uh, when our bodily system is disturbed, you know, it gets heated up, we get some kind of high fever. So there is a kind of suffering, you know, we are suffering from that high fever. But if we see, if we see deep into it, that fever is also helpful because that fever alarms us that something wrong is going in our body, right? So this kind of suffering also is beneficial for us. 
if we have cough, if we have a fever, or if there is a bitterness in our tongue, you know, all these symptoms, they are, they are a part of suffering, right? But they are very helpful because they give us an alarm that something is wrong in our body. And at that time, what we do? The only thing we do is we reach out to a doctor because doctor is expert in that field. So we reach out to a doctor. And through the reaching out to the doctor, we come to a conclusion yet that yes, something is wrong in our body. So similarly, if we also have some kind of suffering, first of all, we should be thankful. We should be really thankful because that gives us an opportunity to look at the root cause why I'm suffering. Why? What's the reason behind it? And then we can reach out to material problems. We can reach out to our parents. And if we have any spiritual problem that why I'm not able to do this, then we can reach out to our spiritual mentors, to our spiritual master, to Krishna. So we have to understand that we are all in a foreign atmosphere. Just like a fish out of water with all comforts and luxuries can never enjoy. For a fish that is as good as death. So this is the right example, you know, that is being given. That how the fish, if you take out the fish from water, you can give all the comforts to the fish. But fish will not be happy. The fish will be happy when it is gone back to water. Similarly, the students, you know, they sometimes, when especially they are in their college, they feel uh, very happy, you know, that, oh, we'll go to dorm, we'll go to hostels and we'll study there. And they feel excitement, right? But when they stay there for a long time, at that time, they'll feel homesick. They want to go back to their parents. They want to go back to their home. This is what, what I'm talking about is homesickness, is returning to harmony. So we are the same fishes who feel little happy when we are out of our regular environment, but we always long to go back to our uh, daily environment or daily, you know, the parents' home. We want to be with them. So similarly, this whole place, the place where we are in this material universe, this is a place just like fish out of water because we are the eternal soul and we can only be happy when we are united with our Supreme Lord, when we are there and serving our Supreme Lord. So when we go home, back home, back to Godhead, then we will be happy. So it's just like searching happiness at a wrong place. So if we want, you know, suppose if I have a car key and I kept that car key in my kitchen, somewhere near the kitchen. Now, if I go and find my car keys in my bedroom, in my laundry room, in my living area, in my dining area, nowhere I can be able to find. Why? Because I'm searching the keys at a wrong place. I don't remember where I have kept key. So definitely, you know, my thought process will be that I'll search all over the home because I don't remember. But if the third person, who, a second person, if he knows that oh, I've kept the key in the kitchen, then what that person will say, hey, you are searching it a wrong direction. You are searching in a wrong place because keys are in the kitchen and I'm searching all over the home. Similarly, the spiritual master, our spiritual mentors, they know that we are seeking out to happiness, but we are seeking happiness at the wrong place. This place where we are in is Dukhalayam Ashashvatam, is the place of miseries, is the temporary place. So there, whatever happiness we'll get will also be temporary. Otherwise, it will all be suffering. It will not be... Uh, permanent happiness. So if we want to get rid of our uh, sufferings and achieve eternal happiness, then we have to search happiness at the right place. And what is that right place? Is the place of the Supreme Lord, where there is no suffering. That's why the place of the Supreme Lord is also known as Vaikuntha. Kuntha means suffering and Vaikuntha means where there is no suffering. So when we go to the Supreme Lord's place where there is no suffering, definitely there all be happiness. And there, you know, if we seek happiness, we'll find it. 
So just as if we go to kitchen, then only I'll be able to find my car keys because I've kept it there. So this is what is returning to harmony. Thus, our place is not in this world, but in the spiritual world that is beyond this world of suffering. And to become free from suffering, we must learn to live in harmony with the teachings of God. And that is what is known as art of living in harmony. And that is what is the teachings of Bhagavad Gita is or the teachings of Krishna consciousness is. So this is what the Bhagavad Gita teaches us about the purpose of this creation and tells us what is right and what is wrong. And therefore, it is categorized as the manual to the art of living in harmony. So this is what you know, I want to stress on, that this is the right solution to it. So we may have a lot of problems. We may have temporary problems. We may have uh, permanent problems, the problems like a birth, a death, old age and disease. But the solution of everything lies in Krishna consciousness, where we have harmony towards the Lord. So what simple steps we can take to harmonize our relationship with the Lord is that we have to count our blessings in our life. If we feel some part of our life, some time, if we feel, oh, I have this problem, I'm suffering because of this, and this is not going right in my life, this is not going right in my life. I'm not saying don't address those problems. We should. But at the same time, stop focusing on the problem. Just try to focus on the blessings you have in your life, which is very, very important. Just be grateful. Only a grateful heart can be the recipient of Lord's mercy. So just be grateful towards your parents, towards the Supreme Lord, and thank them for whatever they have been provided to us. So therefore it says, count your blessings. I'll teach you a song also. If you sing that song every day, trust me, it's really going to help you out. But sing it with a meaning. Otherwise, <laughs> no. So how we can count our blessings? By pondering upon, by introspecting that what is good in my life? I'm better than others. Just try to maintain a chat or maintain a balance in your mind that I'm better than others. Okay, I'm not the best. I'm not in the best position. But just see, I'm better than others. So this way, just keep on counting your blessings in your life. And you will be grateful. And when you are grateful, then definitely everything will be harmonized and everything will be happy and for that we have to chant the holy name i really request all of you those who are not chanting please 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 try to chant at least one round start with one round one round means 108 times one the whole mala chant one round at least of Hare Krishna Mahamantra. It will hardly take six to seven minutes, but it was going to bring a tremendous change in a positive direction in your life. Please, I know most of you must be chanting. You all are devotee kids. But if you are not chanting, please take up this process and be consistent. Be consistent. If you have taken up a vow of chanting one round, two round, four rounds, be consistent in whatever rounds you have, you have taken up a vow of. Be consistent and take time out. You have so much, 24 hours. No matter at what age you are, you cannot be that busy that you cannot take out few moments for the Supreme Lord who has given you everything. Just as a matter of being grateful to the Supreme Lord, take up this process of chanting. Just chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Just chant one round, means uh, like this, chant the whole Maha Mantra 108 times and you will see this tremendous change. Now this is what I am talking about, being your senior, being your elder, I am talking about my own experience, okay? So learn from those experiences. I'm talking of my own experience that how Mahamantra has benefited me. So that's why I'm right now in a position and have this audacity to guide you all that it was definitely going to work for you all also. So make it a point, make it a point today that especially in this month, which is such an auspicious month going on. So make it a point that if you are not chanting, please chant. If you are chanting, 
chant with more concentration with more focus in a more prayerful mood so that you can you know krishna is bound to hear your prayers so with that loving mood try to chant and then remember the lord as soon as you get up early in the morning just say this hari krishna mahamantra at least once and remember the supreme lord thank him for giving him for giving you one more day so that you can spend in remembrance of him so this way you can thank him and that way you know you can become more closer to the supreme lord make up a mind that you know whatever if you are doing anything bad and if you know that you are doing anything bad make it up a point that from today onwards you are not going to do it for example if you i'm just saying example i know you all are devotee kids but i'm just give you as an example that if suppose you are telling lie make it a point that from now onwards you are not going to tell lie if you have a habit of stealing make it a point that from now onwards you are not going to steal so if any of the bad habits you have please introspect yourself and make it a point and promise to the supreme lord that you know from now onwards you are not going to do why i am saying this is because these are you know unmoral values so you have to come first on the platform of moral value and then you can be categorized as a devotee you cannot become just a devotee like that first you have to come on to those moral values you have to be a human being you have to come on to that humanitarian platform just like taking uh, boarding a flight if you want to go from one destination to another destination and you need a flight you need to go to the airport if you are not going to the airport you cannot board a flight the flight will not come to your home right so to board a flight you need to go to an airport so this airport is coming on to the value of moral values coming on to the platform of moral values so when we come on to the platform of moral values only then when we come on to airport only then we'll be able to board a plane and we can transcend and we can i'm sorry just one minute yeah so when we come on to the platform of those moral moral values only then we'll be able to introspect and we'll be able to ponder upon the blessings of the supreme lord and we'll be able to introspect that what is good in my life and what is not good in my life but that can only happen if we come on to that um, platform of moral values so we should have good moral values we should be very loving we should be very cooperative we should have an attitude of giving not always taking we should have an attitude of doing household chores that is also very very important if you being a teenager if you are not doing any household chores and you are simply busy uh, on your in your studies then please this is the time that you should start go to your mom go to your dad go to your parents i mean to say and ask them what menial chores you can do at home and do it that's really 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 going to help you how that will give you a sense of responsibility and when you are responsible in just maintaining those small items at home under the guidance of your parents then definitely you will be able to hold on the responsibility in your school in your projects being a good leader and of course tomorrow when you will facing this material world you'll have so many responsibilities so try making try to be responsible from your home charity begins at home here home in in your home you have the opportunity that you have the guidance of your parents under their guidance being responsible start doing household chores take care of your laundry small small household chores i'm not saying that you take the burden of the whole family cooking for them no small small household chores it's really going to help you again i'm talking about it's all about my experience like cleaning up uh, your your room that's the best you can do clean up your room by your own self regularly on a regular basis then you can do dishwashing then you can empty the dishwasher or you can take care of your own laundry or you can take care of mopping and sweeping the floor means even if you have the cleaning lady or everything come up but still still take up the responsibility of some menial chores at your home your parents can guide you the best please reach out to them and they can help you with 
but this if you do this it's really going to help you and there is no age for this you can start from the age of 9 10 up to 20 and so on and so forth you can do it okay so this is what you know i want to just say something about it and yes with the song i was telling that you have to keep on counting your blessings so i'll sing just just, just a three lines uh, you know just a kind of a stanza but if you sing and if you ponder upon it's really going to help you count your blessings name them one by one count your blessings see what lord has done count your blessings name them one by one and it will surprise you what the lord has done so if you keep on thinking on it i can assure you i can give you this assurance that your sufferings will reduce to zero just be grateful just be grateful sufferings will come this world is made up of suffering but at the same time if you count on your blessings if you are grateful if you reach out to your elders if you reach out to your parents the so called sufferings will reduce if not at least you will get the strength to come over to cross over such sufferings okay so this is what i was talking about and now i'll open up for the question and answer session and see if you have something and if not then i'll put up my question and then you all will be forced to answer so let's see if we have any questions any thoughts any reflections anything if you want to share Hare Krishna Mataji, I really like how you mentioned that we should always count our blessings and not really think about the problems in life because um, we need to know that Krishna always loves us no matter what and we should be grateful for what we have now and not want more. Very good, Ashna. Yes, we have to. And that will give us some positivity also. Yes. Thank you, Ashna. Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna Kushi. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. How are you, Mathe? Good. Um, I just wanted to thank you for the nice discussion today. And one thing that I will take away from this discussion that really stuck with me was how you said, how you come, how you use the analogy of a doctor's diagnosis to a patient with the suffering of a person and how when we suffer that instead of thinking, Krishna, why did you make us suffer? What did what wrong did I do? We should thank him because it is an opportunity for us to change ourselves. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kushi, for bringing up that point. Yeah. Thank you. If you all reflect on all this, whatever you are sharing, I can just say that you will be awesome. Awesome citizens, awesome devotees, awesome human beings. Okay, anybody else? Anyone else want to say something? Anshu, you are there. You want to say something? Yes, Mataji. Um, so I don't, I don't have any realizations, but like, um, like I just have one question. Like, is it still okay to be independent? Like, um. You're still taking, okay, so you're saying that you can still, okay, so you're saying that you have to take, um, like, guidance from your parents. So, like, how much independent should you be, um, like, because... I got you. So you want to say, when I'm saying that one point you have to be independent, and the other point, you know, you have to be dependent on your parents... So where we can draw a line, is it? Yeah. Yeah. So also what I was trying to say is that being independent doesn't mean that you take all your decisions all by yourself. That is not the real independence is. Independence in the sense that you are able to do some of your jobs correctly. You can take some of the decisions correctly, but on your own, but at the same time under the guidance, under the supervision of your, your parents. So that is what is, you know, what I was stressing on, that the real independence, what these days teenagers think is, 
that oh i can do on my own i don't need help of anybody and i am now grown up and you know i can be independent you know that thought process should not be there so that's the real what prabhupada always used to say that independence is not when we think that we can do everything on our own but independence is when